It's the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Uh, good to see all of y'all. Good to see a bunch of Lee and Karen's family here this morning. Uh, they're growing. I uh, want to welcome Jessica back leading our service today. And uh, Jessica's going to be with us uh, several Sundays in June as well. Uh, glad to have Sharon playing the piano for us this morning. She... Uh, taking Vicki's place. Vicki and Joel are on a trip uh, to Gatlinburg and uh, Joel or one of them said to tell everybody hello and, and send a reminder to Lori as well. So they're, <laughs> so they're, they're thinking about us. Uh, went to my dermatologist, had a treatment done on my face this past week to uh, help get rid of all those blemishes that might turn into something worse and my skin is still kind of angry today, but uh, another week it ought to be healed and back to normal again. Uh, <clears throat> the Wednesday evening uh, hymn rehearsal group will be meeting the, this week, uh, getting, getting that back to our, our regular uh, time. Uh, our Give God 30 group uh, if you're up and about in the morning, come sit in sometime. You don't have to participate if you're if you're not a person that that doesn't want to prayer in a group or out loud or whatever. But uh, the the you can feel the presence of the Spirit there. And if you have any prayer concerns, you can share them and and know that they're prayed about. And uh, it's good a good fellowship as well. A reminder. I saw everybody with hymnals uh, out this morning. Want to remind everybody about our fifth 
Sunday hymn sing. That's going to be the last day of June, the 30th. Uh, we're looking forward to putting that program together and looking forward to the, the hymns that everybody shares. I ask everybody to uh, put their name uh, on the card when they select the hymns so we'll know who's, whose favorites those are. Uh, if you'd rather not take the time to thumb through those hymnals out there, to look up your hymn, just write down the title of it, put it on a card, put it in that container, and I'll find the words and music to it. Uh, if y'all go by the, uh, the middle classroom, you'll see that somebody has gotten in there and done some rearranging and all, and cleaned that up in preparation for the uh, kids program that we're going to have this summer. So. Uh, we're looking forward to that, and just if you need any help, holler and and I there'll need be some hands to, to the kids show up. That's the help I need for it. <laughs> uh, we, we can do that. Uh, a reminder about the uh, the women who worship group. They're back meeting at the church. Uh, meeting time is, is 10 a.m. So you can uh, get your coffee and have conversation. And the study time starts at 10:30. Uh, we're past all the uh, all the birthdays for the month. Uh, are, there, are there any other announcements that need to be made? If not, I'll turn the service over to Jessica. Good morning. Good morning. Let us pray. Father, thank you for giving us your Son, for sending us your Holy Spirit, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Lord Jesus, thank you for showing us your love, for showing us the Father's heart towards us. We love you. We are coming today in your name, gathering in your presence in the presence of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, trusting that you are in the midst of us and we are called by your name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Please join me. Today's call to worship. Heavenly Father, you're worthy of praise from every mouth. Worthy of the confession from every tongue. Worthy of worship from every creature. Triumph God is your glorious name, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You created the world in your grace. And we pray by your compassion, you save the world. To your goodness and majesty, O God, all creation bows down in praise. Singing without ceasing, holy, holy, holy Lord. Heaven and earth are full of your praises. Hosanna Our first hymn is hymn 138 in your hymnal. Standing as you're able, we'll sing together, Holy, Holy, Holy. <coughs>
take a moment to consider the state of our hearts and the ways that we have fallen short of what God wants for us this week. Now let us confess our sins to God and one another. Holy and triune God, you alone live in perfect relationship, one God, three persons, mutual and loving, ever seeking reconciliation and unity. You have called us to live in your complete harmony, and we confess that our relationships are imperfect and that we are complete without you. We are selfish and greedy. We are anxious and resenting. We feel the shame of our foolish behavior and brokenness. We have allowed sin to drive us apart from one another and from you. Forgive us and restore us. Draw us close and bind us together in your mercy. May we long for wholeness and peace. May we strive toward gratitude and grace. And say in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, by the working power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Now hear the good news. Our gracious Father is more faithful to forgive us than we are to sin. So receive the Holy Spirit's comforting words. Because of the cross, we have been forgiven of all our sins. Our hearts have been washed clean, and our life is held safely in the love of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Christ, eternal word, beloved and faithful Son of the Father incarnate, we ask today that you would share your knowledge of the Father's heart with us. We thank you for your promise that any time two or three of us are gathered together in your name, you are in the midst of us. Holy Spirit, bring to this place your peace. Illuminate our hearts and minds that as the scriptures are read and proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Today's scripture readings are on the back of your bulletin. We're reading first from the prophet Isaiah, and then out of the gospel according to John, and then Paul's letter to the Romans. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphim to me, having in his hand a burning coal, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, and your guilt is taken away, and your sin is forgiven. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I sin, and whom will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of sonship. And when we cry, Abba, Father, it is the Spirit himself bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. <coughs> so today is Trinity Sunday. And I think we know that God exists as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one, inseparable. But sometimes that's very mysterious to us. And I find myself struggling to try to understand what does this mean? I mean, three persons, one essence, not three separate gods, not changing shapes. And then I get distracted. And then I start reading all these books of theology, book after book after book, with theories and big words and complicated things about what it means that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all at the same time. And so when we come to worship, we say things like, we've come in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. When we sing the Gloria Patri, we say, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. When we're baptized, we hear that we are baptized into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And this permeates our worship. So it's got to be important. So we are here in the name of God. So what does it mean when we give people names? God has given us his name. We give people names like our children. When they're born, we give them names. When we get married, we are given the name. If Usually if we're the wife, we're given the name of the husband. We become part of the family. We name our pets. So in some way, names being given to us by others put us in relationship with them. Relationships that we're promising to take care of and provide for and love whoever the name is given to. So in our scripture readings today, we're on this journey. First, we start out in Isaiah. We start out in the year that King Uzziah died. We see the Lord sitting on a throne like a king. But King Uzziah has died. King Uzziah was a good king compared to what Israel used to have for kings. But he was very, he was a military king. He conquered all of the tribes around him. And then he died. But here we're comparing King Uzziah to the kingship of God. And it says, Lord God of hosts is what the angels sing. That's a, that's a way to say God of angel armies, right? So we are introduced to this idea that God is the king and he is all powerful and he's eternal, not like King Uzziah. And he will use his might to take care of us and protect us. We see the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. One other thing about God's kingship we see here. In, in the Hebrew, the train of his robe is the word for the hem of his garment. So the hem of the robe of God is filling the temple. And it made me think about Jesus when he's walking through the streets. And this woman who has the hemorrhage of blood says, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I would be healed. And she does. So there's this way in which the hem of his garment is where our healing comes from. And here we read that 
The hem of his garment fills the temple. Healing is what our God brings to us as king, not oppression. And the whole earth is full of his glory. The whole earth, he fills all creation. He is a good king who is never far from us. And in the presence of this perfection, Isaiah, and like all of us who have ever encountered this king, we have no choice but to see the distance between the perfection of God and our imperfections as humans. The, the gap between the light of God and the darkness that we feel in our souls. And it undoes us. It causes us so much pain. And we say, God, how can you be so close when I am so sinful? But this healing that God offers us, he makes a way for it. One of the angels comes and he touches Isaiah's lips with this burning coal taken off the altar of God in heaven. And when we think about this, we know that when we receive communion, we receive Jesus from the altar onto our lips and he makes us clean. And so our iniquity is taken away. Our sin is purged. And then we can hear the voice of the Lord speaking to us, saying, who shall I send to go tell about this? Who will go for us? And in thankfulness, we say, here I am. Send me. And God says, go. Go then. So after we read this, the, the lectionary brings us into the Gospel of John. Now we have Jesus. God has sent his only son into the world to unite us in everlasting life to the Father. So now we have this realization that God is not only king, he is the son, and he is the Father. Jesus teaches us to pray, our Father who art in heaven. He teaches us that he is the perfect revelation of the face of the Father. So now we know that not only is God a king who's all-powerful, who is the commander of angel armies, he is also a healer. He is merciful and compassionate and desires to be among us. Now we know beyond the shadow of a doubt what God is like. Finally, we get into the reading to the, uh, to the Romans. And we have the Holy Spirit, who Jesus says is the comforter, the spirit of truth. And we finally learn the depth of this relationship that God has. The Spirit speaks in our hearts that God is not only Father, He's Abba Father. And in Hebrew, that word is a very intimate way of talking about your father. It's not, oh, Father. It's more like Daddy, Papa. Even what babies would go, da-da. So God, we are God's children. And he is our father. And he longs for us to be included in this relationship. And so now we have this name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's what gives us our identity. We are called by his name. We are his children. He delights in us. And this is by his own choice. No one has forced God to put us in this relationship with himself. He chose it. We were chosen in him before the world began. And through Jesus, we have been included in this relationship. We now share with Jesus the same relationship that Jesus has with his father. We have that relationship with our father, who is the father of us all. Imperfectly, imperfectly for now. But the love that God has for us is no different than the love that God has for Jesus. And it is no different than the love that they share with the Holy Spirit. By being shown to us as Trinity, we see that God exists in relationship to God's own self. God's not a loner. God's not antisocial. God doesn't want to be alone. He's taken us and he's put us in the middle of the circle of love and delight. 
and caught us in his name. And we don't get to choose that. It's given to us. And when we receive this good news, that we are chosen and beloved, not because of anything we've done to deserve it. Our children don't deserve to be born into our families. They're the result of love. And they're always part of our families, for better or worse. And, you know, there's so much pain that goes with that sometimes. So much joy goes into family relationships. And in all our earthly relationships. We've had our hearts broken. We've had our dreams crushed. But we've experienced joy and love and healing. But these ways that we interact with each other, that separate us from each other and from relationship, sometimes we start to apply that to how we think God is towards us. We try to earn God's love and acceptance. When we do that, we start to separate ourselves. We start to think things like Isaiah. I can't, I can't be in the presence of this king. I'm not worthy. But when we realize the love that this shows and this means for us, that God is around us, He's Father above us. He's Jesus beside us. He's Spirit within us and filling all things. We can't escape this love. It's too good. Then we start to be healed. We start to be changed. We start to learn how to trust God. How to abide in His presence. How to be at peace. In a way, the Trinity is our home. This love that binds us together is the only way that we can ever know love. So, today is the last Sunday. So, in the church calendar, we have these seasons. So, we have the season of Advent, and then there's the Feast of Christmas. And then, after Christmas, we have the season of Epiphany where we're celebrating the life that Jesus has brought to the world. And then we have a few Sundays and a few weeks, and then we move into Lent. And so we're repenting for the wrongs that we've done, and we're preparing for Jesus to show us love on the cross, and then the resurrection and the ascension. And so then comes Easter. And then we have the Easter season, which ends with Pentecost. So last Sunday we had Pentecost, Whereas the Spirit's coming, and we're, we're now, we know for sure the Spirit is with us, and Jesus hasn't left us alone. So this is the last Sunday of feasting time. Today is Trinity Sunday. And after this, we move into what's called ordinary time, until we start Advent again. In an ordinary time, we walk with Jesus in the everyday moments of life, in just his daily life and see the truth of how God interacts with us. And so today is the moment that we're shown that we can do this with him, and we can do it out of a place of peace and wholeness. When we know that our identity is beloved and held and safe in the arms of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we can walk out into the world and our light will shine so brightly to this world that's broken to pieces around us. It's that love, the love that calls us by his own name, that puts us in his midst, that gives us the power to do this. So Wednesday, Darlene was talking about her favorite Shakespeare story, Romeo and Juliet. And, uh, and so I started, I was thinking about this sermon and I thought, you know, Juliet has that famous line, what's in a name? That which we call a rose would smell so sweet by another name or something like that. And so I was thinking, so what's in the name? Because in the Hebrew church and the Jewish synagogues and gatherings, when they call on the name of God, they call him Hashem, which means the name, right? And so what's in a name? What's in the name of God? We are. We are in his name. So we don't need to fear. We don't need to be anxious. 
We will be, because we're not perfect yet. But we don't need those things. His hands hold us more safely than he holds all of creation. And we're part of him. His spirit fills us and is always with us. And so now we are in the presence of God and every moment is holy and we hear the angels cry, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. The whole earth is full of your glory. And because we know this love and we know we're on the inside of this love, we don't come and we don't have to say, oh, like in a groveling kind of way, like, please let me deserve your holiness in my life. We can say it from the inside. We can say, yes, holy are you, Lord. You have forgiven our sins. You have made a way to the Father for us through death, through the cross, through the resurrection and ascension. And from the inside of this relationship, we get to proclaim God's love to the world. So I'm going to close with this story. I, uh, I was telling this story to a friend of mine who was a bishop last night, and he laughed really hard. Um, he said he had never heard a story about Golden Corral in the middle of a sermon about the Trinity. But here we go. Okay, so my kids and I were at Golden Corral yesterday. And so I'm thinking about this. We're included in the family relationship of God. We're in this love. And what does that mean to us? And so the Golden Corral suddenly gets so full. And we're sitting over here in this corner. And people keep piling in and piling in. And there are pretty soon the special event room is full. And there are more people coming in and more people coming in. And we're surrounded by all these people. And then I noticed they're all carrying little gift bags. It's somebody's birthday. It's the grandfather's birthday. And this is a whole family that's come. And the people are looking at each other. And they're smiling. And they're, they're hugging each other. And they're, oh, my name's Marcus. Oh, my name's Joni. Like, we haven't seen you in so long. And the more I watched this, my kids started to get aggravated because it meant the dessert bar selection was going down. <laughs> but I'm watching this thing of beauty. Everyone here is united by the name of this grandfather. They have all come in the name of their grandpa. And everywhere they turned, they were greeted with delight and smiles and joy and smiling faces. And I think that's the message of the Trinity. Like, maybe it's not something we're meant to understand all the way. I don't understand how everybody was related to each other there. But I do know they were all related to the one guy who had all the bags around him. And I could share in that joy. Even though I didn't know anything about this, I was able to experience it. And that's our experience with God. Everywhere we look, we're greeted by God's love, by his joy. Even if we don't feel it, it's there. And when we don't feel it, he's there comforting us, still looking on us with love. And he loves us so much. Amen. All right. Um, if everybody will... We're going to do the Apostles' Creed next. Here in this laminated insert. <laughs> Let's say together what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and stood at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Staying standing as you're able, we'll go to hymn 466. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. these gifts to humbly offer back to you. Gracious God, accept and bless now these gifts of our lives, our time, our talents, the work of our hands, our love for one another, and use them for the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please pray for Karen. She's probably going to have to have a hip replacement. Yeah, so uh, definitely going to keep Karen in our prayers. That is the only prayer in the box today. So for who else and what else can we pray? Uh, Jessica, a lot of people traveling. Susan and her family's traveling. Joel and Vicki, so travel mercies for them, but uh, as you know, there's a whole lot of people on the road this weekend. I have a Thanksgiving. Uh, missing from the prayer box is Gail's name. We all still pray for it. But I'm glad that we're not praying for her, but that getting better because she's here with us. We have a lot to be thankful for. Yes, and also on the praise, we've got Rita here. 
I thought you snuck out, Rita. I was like, <laughs> where'd she go? <laughs> yes. Thanks for Gail and Rita. There's so many answered prayers. We have so many answered prayers. At our, um, at our Jessica, five, yes, ma'am. We need to keep uh, share, uh, Karen in our prayers. I don't think she's feeling real good today. Okay. And I have another cataract surgery this week. Sharon. Mm -hmm. I my two sister-in-laws. One of them has the shingles and the other one's cancer of her breast is metastasized to her liver. That's Becky, Kathy and Becky. Um, who else? What else? Uh, I think we need to um, give a special thanks for this Memorial Day weekend for all the soldiers who have provided us with this country that we have the freedoms that we have. Our Bible study group on Wednesday mornings we um we all share our prayer requests with each other and um, this last week we were on page four so um <laughs> Helen said she was going to cut her prayer short a little bit by just saying Lord take care of everything on page four of the prayer journal <laughs> so uh, let's keep page four of the prayer journal and your prayers all right trusting that God hears our prayer in peace, let us pray for our needs and the needs of the whole world. Most merciful Father, we, your children, thank you for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you've made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. And above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. Lord, we pray for your church here and scattered all over the world, thanking you for all who serve Christ and his kingdom. Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Lord, we pray for all those who struggle with their faith, who do not know you, who have walked away from you, who do not believe, those who doubt, for those who have lost their faith, and for those who trust you with their lives. Lord Jesus, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross so that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. Clothe us also in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. We pray for blessings of abundance and protection over our crops. We pray that we would be thoughtful, wise, and generous in the use of this world you have created for us to care for. We pray for this community, this nation, this world. We pray for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. We pray for those who have served our country as vets and the armed forces and who are still serving us, Lord. We're thankful for the freedoms and the blessings that you've given us. We pray that your protection will be on them always. We pray for those who feel alone and hopeless. We pray for those who believe they have no one else to pray for them. We pray for people everywhere, Lord, for our families, for our friends, our neighbors, and the strangers. We pray especially, Lord, for those who have wronged us and for those who we have wronged. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep today. And give your angels charge over us when we lie down to sleep. 
Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. And shield the joyous for your love's sake. Comfort and heal those in sorrow, need, sickness, or any other trouble. We pray especially for care and we pray for healing and comfort. Pray for wisdom. We pray for all those who are on the roads this weekend for their traveling safety. We especially pray for Susan and her family, for Vicki and Joel and Stephen as they travel. Lord, we pray for Gail's sister-in-law, Becky. We pray for healing, Lord, and comfort and peace. And also for Gail's sister-in-law, Kathy, as she has shingles, Lord. Bring your healing. We praise you for the prayers that you have answered, Lord, for the healing of Gail and for Rita. We praise you in the midst of uncertainty as many of us are facing doctor's appointments and test results in the future. Lord, give us comfort and peace and help us to trust that you are the great physician. And whatever these things turn up, they are no mystery to you. We pray for all those who have asked us to remember them in our prayers, whom we may have forgotten to pray for specifically today. And we pray for all those needs that are too tender and close to our hearts for words to express. For those we say, Lord, have mercy. We pray for peace in the church, in our hearts, and in our homes, and in the whole world. God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of this earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Lord, we know you look with compassion on all who turn to you. Hear the praise and prayers of your people. Because we love you. And we trust your love for us. And so we gather all these prayers and praise together. And pray with one voice as your Son, our Savior, taught us. Saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right. Our last hymn is an insert in your bulletin. We have heard the joyful sound. It's on the back side of the ongoing prayer request list.
There is some food that has been brought today in the back, so if you want to stay and eat, that would be wonderful. So uh, let's bless the food together, and then we'll bless the people. God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for our food. By his hands, we all are fed. Thank you, Lord, for our daily bread. Amen. Amen. Now receive this blessing as we go. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. And may the blessings of Almighty God, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us now forever. Amen. Amen.